Hey, this is Derek, and this is a quick preview of iNaturalist. iNaturalist is an app that helps the user to take a picture of plants and animals, wherever they are, and identify them. So uh, you take a picture, the observation goes online, and it's uh, publicly accessible data. Uh, the app itself will help you to identify images, which I can show in a sec, but the information is also available to scientists if you allow it to be. So this first preview video is just on the, um, the licensing and permissions uh, screen when you're creating an iNaturalist account. So you have to, in order to create an account, you have to at least agree to the third option here. Uh, and I guess, yes, and the second one here. So you have to consent to iNaturalist to store and process limited kinds of personal information. You have to agree to a terms of service, privacy policy, and community guidelines. Let's look at each of these things. So the first check mark is, yes, license my content so scientists can use my data. Check this box if you want to attribute or apply a Creative Commons Attribune non-commercial license to your photos. So you can change the license uh, or remove it, but they selected this license as the best way for researchers to benefit from the data. Next, uh, I consent to allow iNaturalist to store and process limited kinds of personal information about me in order to manage my account. And this, uh, I guess, personal information like username and email. Um, and there's also a privacy policy, which we could look at. Terms of service. Now, this usually is a bigger thing. So let me open this up and go through it and see if there's any big things that stick out to me. A non-legal uh, technologist, but still somebody who's had to review a whole bunch of these things. The California Academy of Sciences website and National Geographic. So those are the two organizations responsible for iNaturalist. Um, you have to be 13 plus. Uh, it captures information about uh, you, such as your email and username. You are entirely responsible for the content. So <laughs> I don't know, is this their section 230 uh, clause? Um, basically, you promise not to upload... Uh, pornography or spam or Trojan horses, horses or any or other sorts of things. You, you use this normally. Um, it's basically saying it's not responsible for any of the content provided. And we agree not to use iNaturalist for commercial purpose. We agree... Oh, okay, so it's going to say it, it'll... Um, Respect DCMA policy. It's hard for me to imagine that anybody using this app the way that it was intended would run into DCMA, but there it is. Probably a lawyer uh, said it. There's a whole bunch about DCMA. Intellectual property saying they deserve all this stuff. Okay. So nothing really surprising here. It's basically, um, oh, you agree to indemnify and hold harmless iNaturalist, its code contributors, its contractors, uh, iNaturalist um, publishing of support. Uh, this is a this is an open source application. This is really cool to know. All right. So as a user uh, who cares about uh, the terms, nothing really strikes me out here. They're collecting some information. They're asking us to use the app in the way that it's supposed to be intended and not to uh, distribute porn or music or whatever. Cool. Let's check out their privacy policy. Uh, legal speak, legal speak. Each country has different laws and rights according to the personal information of their, relating to the personal information of their residents. So, look at that. They have different privacy disclosures for each of these countries that they're operating in. Um, here they define your personal information, which seems to be basic bio data, um, email, street address, mailing address. Yeah, I guess that makes sense because we will be, if you're uploading this photo, you provide lat long coordinates from your GPS. Credit card information. That's surprising to me. I didn't know that they collected credit cards, but let's see. Um, it connect, collects personal information of the sort that web browsers, hardware, software. Yeah, it basically knows about the device that is sending this information. Um, it collects this information through the website. Uh, because there's a, a web-based version of iNaturalist as well. How we use it. 
We may use the personal information that you provide in order to deliver iNaturalist services, respond to your inquiries, improve our services, etc. If you register as a user, you must give us complete, current, and accurate information. We cannot and shall not. Okay. Personal information. Now, this is usually where it gets iffy, because sometimes uh, apps say, hey, we're going to you know, use your information for whatever we want, uh, and you say that's fine. Um, it says that our information is posted on any post that we make that is published where it is visible to anyone. That makes sense. You are uploading a picture, and it is hard to say that a monarch butterfly is here uh, unless you provide a location. And so the username and location um, and the time and date and whatnot will all be part of the post. We also explicitly and publicly share this information publicly <laughs> in a machine readable format with a variety of partners. We share personal information associated with users' registration and account, IP addresses, email addresses, etc., with representatives from the iNaturalist network members. It discloses personal information to contractors, service providers, consultants um, for improving iNaturalist web apps, websites and apps. Okay, so it's just, um, it's not just iNaturalist, but the people they work with to improve their services, with the exception of non-public location data. Okay. Some of these contractors may be located outside your home country. Fine. We use Microsoft, Azure, and Amazon Web Services, Google Maps Platform, and SendGrid. Um, if you choose to participate in some optional services, and, and as I recall, I could sign up using Google Maps, or my Google account, and Facebook. Um... Yeah, it looks like there's more donor box and Stripe, Shopify predefined tax drawer. These are things. Um, so sometimes if you have applications that interact with other services online, you need to provide information. And that makes sense if you're working with Stripe to process payments and stuff like that. So that's not very surprising at all. Um, other than the, those described above, iNaturalist pr discloses personal information only when required to do so by law. And then they describe all the things that might be involved with that. All right, so again, not being a lawyer, um, this seems like a fairly uh, benign uh, data policy. They basically collect information about the user. They will use that information to um, either provide services to the user or to improve the services that they already have, or when, you know, in cooperation with various third parties for, you know, again, experiences for the user. And they give the example of Stripe. Um, and other than that, they'll only provide information uh, to other parties if it's a government entity. Um, and uh, iNaturalist may process your personal information, blah, 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 blah. Okay, and you can opt out. Um, okay, this, this all seems fairly benign to me. So that is what the login screen looks like for iNaturalist. And in the next video, I'm going to show um, what the application itself looks like. Stay tuned.